Hey, my name is Jesus Castillo from rubyguides.com and if you like Ruby, subscribe to the channel now so I can send you more Ruby videos. Now let's talk about Rack. So this was a request from one of you that are watching these videos and you ask to make a video about what is Rack. So that's exactly what we have here. I'm going to explain to you what is RAC, what is RAC, why does it exist, what are the benefits of using RAC, and exactly what you can do with it. So let's talk about that. In my screen, I have, I prepared some slides for you. And on the first slide, we see this three blocks, three, three boxes. And if this one says rails, then the next one says rack. And the last one says web server. So web server can be anything like Puma, Passenger, um, Unicorn, Thin, any Ruby web server. Now notice that the order matters and that rack is in the middle. So this image should tell you a lot about what Rack is doing because Rack is in the middle between the web framework, in this case Rails, and the web server. So what Rack is, is an interface between the web server and the web framework. So it allows these two components to communicate, to talk to each other. So why do we use Rack? Why do we why don't we go directly from Rails to the web server? Well, there is a few reasons for that. And on the next slide, on the next slide, we can see some of the benefits of using Rack. For example, the web server doesn't, doesn't need to know anything about Rails. So that's a good thing because it means it, it, it's, it's a component. We can change it since it's not tied together to Rails. And also Rails doesn't need to know anything specific, any specific implementation details about the web server. And that's also a good thing, because we mean when we have this, we can change the pieces. It's, they become components that we can change. So in the next bullet point, I explain that you can use any RAC compatible web server with Rails. So what this means is that we can change Puma for thin. It's not thin, it's thin without the K. Unicorn, Passenger, we can use any of those servers. And the reason we can do that is because of Rack. Because when there is this interface in the middle, they just become components. The web server is just a component we can change. So that's a big benefit of Rack. And then, it also works both ways. So we can use Puma as our web server, and then we can have any web framework. So Puma, like I said, is not tied directly to Rails. So Puma can also be used with Sinatra, for example, or, or other web frameworks that are not Rails. So this is one of the big benefits of using Rack. But there is another very important benefit, advantage, and that's on the last slide, and it's called Rack Middleware. Rack Middleware. What's that? Well, you may remember from our first slide from a moment ago, start of the video, I show you this image with three boxes and Rack on the middle. Well. It happens that since Rack is on the middle, 
That's why we have middleware. We can write small applications that sit on the middle of the communication between the web server and the web framework. And what this allows you to do is things like what I have on this list. So for example, you can do login. So whenever a request comes from a user that visits your website, then you can lock that request. You can say this IP address visited this page or requested this page. And you can also lock the response to that. You can also do things like exception handling. So if an error happens, an exception is raised in your Rails application or whatever web framework you're using, then inside this middleware, you can handle it in a way that shows like a nice error message. So when you are developing your Rails application and you get something like exception, this error happen, or you get this better errors gem. That's how it works. It works as a middleware because it sits in the middle. Then another thing you can do with middleware is serving static files. What's a static file? Static files are things like CSS, yes, so JavaScript files. So all of the files that are not Ruby, basically, that don't need to be processed by Rails. And a few more things you can do. You can also do access control. So that means you can limit the number of requests. There is uh, a gem for that. You can limit the who access. So you can limit, for example, this IP address is banned for visiting your site. You can do that with middleware. And another one, I will leave you with one more example, that's profiling. So you can say this request took exactly, for example, 100 milliseconds or 50 milliseconds. And you can keep track of that using also rack middleware. So as you can see, rack is very useful and it and allows you to do all of these things. It allows you to change components, meaning that you can change the web server, you can change from Puma to Unicore to Passenger, and everything will still work fine. You don't have to change anything in your Ruby application, in your Rails application, because Rails and the web server are not directly tied together. And you also get this middleware and you can write your own middleware if you want. And all of that because Rack sits in the middle. It's the interface between web server and web framework. So I hope you found this video very useful and interesting. Please subscribe to the channel now so you can receive notifications when new videos come out and that helps you improve your Ruby skills. And also helps me grow the channel. So thanks a lot for watching. See you in another video.